Olá! Daqui a pouquinho você vai ver o programa com o Mike Stern, mas antes eu tenho um recado para te dar. Se você curte o nosso canal, além de se inscrever, de ativar o sininho, de compartilhar os vídeos e curtir também, você agora pode se tornar um membro. Quer saber mais sobre isso? Clica no botão Seja Membro aqui no canal Um Café Lá em Casa e descubra tudo que a gente tem para oferecer.
First, I have to introduce you to my audience. Gente, hoje eu estou aqui com um ícone da música mundial, um ícone da guitarra, uma referência para todos nós guitarristas no mundo, Mike Stern. Wow! Thanks for coming, man. My pleasure, wow. man. So much fun playing with you. Yeah, yeah. you're kicking my ass, man. This guy can play his ass off. <laughs> Thank you. I never heard you play before, but it's a pleasure. Yeah, a real great, pleasure. Great, great, yeah. Thanks I, for I having have me. heard you many, many times. Oh, I'm a big you. fan. Thank you, yeah. man. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. There was a, a, a long time that I was playing a Telecaster because of you. Wow. <laughs> Actually, in the first place was because of Ted Green. Oh, you know yeah, Ted? Of course. Oof. I know. I, I didn't know him. I never met him. Uh, but he he's left some incredible music. For yeah, he died a few, he, he died, 10 years ago. Yeah, so many years ago. He, he and died very uh, early. Amazing. Actually. He's got some books out that are like the Oof. best books for yeah. voicings. Yes. And, and I was his private student. Really? Yeah, when I was like 19. No wonder you're such a badass. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. In Los Angeles. Yeah. But I have to say something now to... My, my Portuguese, I have to say my Portuguese, which is very quick because I only know one word. Obrigado. Did I say it right? Yeah, right. Okay, Perfect. That's, it. <laughs> that's all you're going to get from me in Portuguese. Yeah. But <laughs> in the first place, I, I bought the, the tele because of uh, Ted Green. But then when I heard, this was 1983, and then I saw you playing with the tele, and then I, I fell in love with, with the kind of sound that was, you were taking from the guitar. Yeah? And it's it's really well. This nice. is like this is this. Um, I had Roy Buchanan. You know Roy Buchanan, Roy, the, yeah, the rocker. Yes. He was more of a blues rocker, and I got his spare guitar from a guy named Danny Gatton, uh -huh. another incredible guitar player, absolutely amazing, from uh, Washington D.C., where I grew up. Uh -huh. I was born in Boston, but I grew up in Washington D.C. and And I got this guitar from Danny. He wanted to buy a used car, so he said, I'm, I need to buy a used car, so I'm, I'm going to sell you this uh, guitar if you want to buy it for $500. And I knew it was a great guitar, so I said, wow, great, okay, I'll take it. And it got, unfortunately, it got stolen from me Ooh. in Boston. When I went back, I was going to Berkeley and living there for a while, and um, and it got, somebody pulled a gun on me, so they had oh a... My God. As I always say, they had a persuasive argument, you know. They, <laughs> so, so, uh, so I had to give it up. But, but, um, but, but that was an amazing guitar. But somebody else had seen me play the guitar, so they built something kind of like it. It looked like it, same pickups, slightly different, but but that same kind of sound and kind of a heavier guitar. They were the first one wasn't so heavy. The second one was heavier because you get a warmer sound. Then Yamaha wanted to do a Mike Stern signature model, mm -hmm. so I said, "Fuck yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> definitely." <laughs> and and so, uh, so so they built this one that's heavy, and it sounds warmer because of that. Because Telecasters are usually more yeah, twangy, theme, yeah, yeah. and I try to get a warmer sound, uh, you know, just from the density of the wood. Okay, it's, and also. The way I process it sometimes is more of like what I'm looking for is kind of more like a horn-like sound or mm -hmm. or a vocal sound. Sometimes I'm actually singing along. It's beautiful. You know, a little what, what wow, I Wow, it works. Just, and I try Amazing. to get that sound anyway with the guitar yeah. where it just... Uh, you don't hear the pick too uh -huh. too loud. You know, uh -huh. you, it, you hear it. But, uh, but but especially with two amps, and I use a little of not really a chorus sound. It's actually a harmonizer patch that mm. kind of. So what whatever uh, the reason I'm doing all that is to try to get what I'm hearing kind of in my head, which is kind of more like a horn or singing kind of sound. And and that's I think what you have to go for is yeah. whatever your. I used to have an ES one seventy five, 
that's not that's no, similar. No, this is that's this not pretty a similar. Yeah, not a good but thing. that's that's this, this is a Nelson Fadia signature model. Also, that's yeah. awesome, yeah. man. But, uh, it's, it's a beauty, it's a Brazilian man. You brand. you kill on it. You sound <laughs> great on it. And so though you know when you have a hollow body guitar already, you have more of a, a kind of a singing kind of sound. It's yeah. more more. But when you try to rock with those, I like yeah, to combine them. They, yeah. it, 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 it yeah. feeds back. It's harder to yeah. deal with. It's not impossible. Distortion. But, Pedal here sounds really crappy in yeah. this guitar. Yeah. But sometimes they sound yeah. great. Yeah. So it depends on yeah. if you want to stuff it with something, whatever. But those are, I had one and it sounded almost, you know, just because of the acoustic properties, it's kind of easier to, to get it to sound kind of like what I'm looking for. So I found a way to kind of, my way of doing this with the yeah. two amps also, which gives it more of an air, air yeah. sound. And then, uh, I mean, with this, we're, we're just doing one amp, but, but usually I use the two amps with a little of this good yeah, sound. Yeah. And, and usually it fills have some in. gear, some, you know, some pedals and, pedals, and two amps. Pedals, a little bit of that, and too. And what, what amazes me, actually, I have to say this here, because he's plugging in directly straight to the amp, no pedals, nothing, just the cable, as, as I do. But my sound is pretty uh, clear sounds, just this. But you usually play with many things. Yeah. But then you plug here, and you have the same sound. So the sound is in your hands. I think the gear. basically that's true with all guitar players, and yeah. I think everybody has their own voice. I really do. Yes. I think I've been lucky to, uh, to 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 record what I my sound with with cats like you know when I was playing with Miles or, or those guys, wow. you know, and and to get my sound out there so people can recognize it. But I yeah. think everybody has their own sound, really. Oh, yeah. Eventually. If you record enough, or you, especially if you write so your own songs, because uh, I think that really helps you get your music together and your sound together. You find your own voice. Everybody has their own. The voice. first album with Miles, with the man with the horn. No, the man with the horn. The man with the horn. And Fat Time was yeah. the, the. It was the last cut on the record, but but he liked the way it came out, so it was the first cut that they used. It was the last one we recorded, but then the first cut that they used on the record and. Uh, and Fat Time was my nickname, you know. <laughs> so he liked the guitar solo so much because he used to call me Fat Time. And then he called the tune Fat Time. Oh, wow, <laughs> yeah. that's great. That <laughs> was really quite an honor, you know. Wow. A matter of fact, he didn't say much to us at all when we first started playing. He'd been in retirement for seven years, and he came back, and and we just started jamming stuff. He wasn't sure what he wanted to do. He had an idea. He told me after we did uh, Fat Time, we did that cut. I said, well, he said, we're gonna go on the road. And I said, great, man, wow, it's Miles, you know. I'm gonna go on the road with Miles. I was all excited. How old was you then? I, I was about 28, 29, wow. something like that. That's... And so he he said, you know, uh, we're gonna go on the road. So I said, great, and I said, well, who's playing keyboards? No keyboards, just you. So he just wanted guitar, he wanted a lean sound, and uh -huh. he said, don't worry, I'll hear it. You know, and I was like, "Oh shit, I gotta play with Miles." All, but uh, so I should learn the chords. Yeah, exactly. And there weren't a lot of them, so it was really kind of we we kind of felt our way along. Kind of that's the way Miles used to, and he used to not tell people, "Don't do this, don't do that." Sometimes he would. He would be kind of directing. In, in certain ways, of course, you know, because he, he wanted certain things and certain things evolved in the music. But he didn't have like charts, very specific stuff, not with me, and I don't think with a lot of his stuff, it was yeah. pretty open and just a concept. And he let people have a lot of room to, to help him develop the concept. He wanted people to be able to do what they do. That's, within that's, his yeah. kind of uh, basic concept and as it came as it kind of gelled with everybody putting in their part you know just by playing uh then he would kind of get an idea of what it was and then when it get to be too predictable he would change it wow and that was kind of difficult yeah. sometimes because you know, <laughs> you'd start feeling yeah. com comfortable yeah then he'd throw you throw you in a yeah. different take place. you in a yeah, yeah. Sometimes. Out of your, your comfort zone. Yeah, I like to rock. I like to do all that stuff. I yeah. was doing that with Miles. He wanted yeah. me to do that. Yeah. He liked the fact that I was coming from bebop a lot, but he loved the fact that I had some Hendrix and some blues, yeah. and yeah. he turn it up, motherfucker. You know, he would just <laughs> want me to play loud. Turn it up, play like Hendrix. And he just meant that vibe. He didn't mean to play Hendrix. Yeah, licks. of course. He just, yeah, yeah. So, um, 
And that's the way he used to say things to people. He would give them an idea, a loose idea, and, 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 it, and then he'd want you to do it in your way. Mike, I would like to, to go back earlier in time. Because uh, I think, of course, this time with, uh, with Miles, it's amazing. And I have, all the work you have done is amazing. But I would like to know in the beginning, how, how do you first start it? I mean, what, what was that? You so my, the... mom, my mom was a piano player and still is a piano player. She's not professional, but she plays really good. And a lot of Bach. She used to play a lot of classical music and still does. And, uh, and, and some jazz. And, and so when I, I was... She originally knew I wanted to do something with music because I was running around the house singing and screaming really <laughs> loud. And so she figured, well, do something with that energy. So she, she got me piano lessons. And I really dug that, and I played piano for a little while, just a little, you know, classical stuff, and, and, uh, but not particularly good. But I, I really dug it. And, but then all of a sudden one day I just... I remember calling up my mom and said... I want to take guitar lessons. I want to play guitar. It was just my choice as a mm -hmm. kid. I think I was around 11 years old. So by the time I was 12, I think I started playing guitar and, and took about three lessons. And then I just started playing by ear for a while. I used to just play along with the records. And then... More in the rock and roll Field. More diatonic music, more uh -huh. one key, blues, uh -huh. and, and Motown. I was little, growing up in Washington, D.C. Uh -huh. It was a lot of like soul music on uh -huh. the radio, and I'd play along with that stuff, which I love some of those tunes still. I mean, they're great, you yeah. know. And, um, and, and, then, and then rock, you know, and then like uh, 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 The Cream, you know, or Led Zeppelin, and mm -hmm. certainly Jimi Hendrix, and, yeah. and all the blues players, B.B. Mm -hmm. King and Albert King. So, so uh, then I, I kind of got into jazz by taking... So I used to take those records and play along with them. That's how I kind of yeah. learned whatever I learned that way at that time. And then I got, took some jazz records of my mom's to, to my room. One was a Miles record, and one was... I think it was a Herbie Hancock record or something, and I tried to play along with that, and I got lost right away. The keys <laughs> had changed, the, the melodies were more intricate. Yeah. It's not better or worse, it's just a different language. Yeah, it was just it's like, uh, you know, it's difficult like, to fit in immediately. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like uh, you know, you have more options. It's like Chinese versus uh, English or something. Okay. You know, Chinese yeah. has got many, a lot of characters. Yeah. yeah, a lot of things. So it's not better or worse. It's just yeah. a language. But it's, uh, and, and I loved it, though. I loved the feel of the music and the fact that there were really cool, a lot of room for improvisation and really seemed like amazing stuff, whatever was being, was, was happening. So I started Then I started trying to learn reading, especially on the guitar, because I didn't really read up to then. And then I went to Berkeley uh, in Boston, and that really helped a lot. Mm -hmm. I stayed there for three years oh. and uh, studied. And with, then it's your jazz background coming from there. Yeah, you know, and from there, there, and from 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 uh, and from playing then, and and yeah. also from my records that I heard my mom play. You know, just those kind of records. You know, because she was into jazz. Mm -hmm. That was the pop music of the day. Yes. In in yeah. that time, of course, That's when great. I came along, it was the Beatles. Still, yeah. you know, it had had you know, when I was young, the Beatles came up, and then Hendrix, and then the Cream, and then all these yeah. other cats, and the Stones, and yeah. and so. Uh, And then there was a lot of soul music and a lot of, you know, uh, so, so, uh, but, but back in the day, the pop music was, was of, of the U.S. And, and, and largely in the world was, was jazz. Oh, yeah, know? totally. So. Mike, yeah. you told about this injury in your, yeah. in your right hand. Yeah. And you have just made the record that. It's called Trip. It's called Trip because, uh, you know, it can mean can, uh, a whole bunch of things. Yeah, can you so talk about I this? I fell two years ago. I fell, it's almost in, July in, 3rd of 2016. I 2000. fell on this construction in New York that wasn't supposed to be there. I was looking both sides of the street. And I was just walking, not really fast, but to walking across the street. To, you don't want to take your time in New York. You get run yeah, over yeah, if you yeah. don't walk, you know. <laughs> so, so, or a bike will come. Yeah. So I'm walking normal, and I didn't see this little construction, and I tripped over mm -hmm. it, and I couldn't stop my fall. So I tried, and then I was going faster to try to catch my body as it was going towards the other side of the street. And I fell kind of like this and broke this 
this kind of hit here and, and broke against my shoulder, this, this humerus bone it's called, mm -hmm. and, and it hit against the shoulder so the top broke where it's connected. And the same thing here. Here was a clean break, here was more difficult and very unlucky. You, this, usually you don't get nerve damage from this or you get it somewhere here, but I got it in my hand. So, so affects this here affects it affected your this. nerves. So now here. I have, I had to get three different surgeries to to kind of put my hand uh, back so I can, well, kind of back together so I can hold a pick because that's about all I can do. I can't really do this so good. And they had to do something so I could have the opposable thumb, so I could move my thumb. Because for about a year, I had to play kind of even without being able to do this, you know. So it was like, man, I, it was like kind of like a monkey's thumb, you know. It was like a lower primate thumb. Mm -hmm. Now I have a higher primate thumb. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't vouch for the rest of me, but I, I my thumb is higher primate. <laughs> but uh, so, so, but but. Um, and this record was 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 the first one after the accident, yeah. And I just did it. I did it like uh, the following January. So I, act, I, I was playing two months after the accident, and people thought I was kind of crazy, but in a good way. Like the, uh -huh. even the doctor who's the that I see now, he said, if you feel like playing and you can deal with the frustration, that's the best thing you can do. Uh -huh. So it's kind of got this picture of the guitar falling on a street. Oh, that yeah. wasn't the street. It was just a cool looking street yeah. to have. Yeah, and you're, so you're playing still. Thanks, still the same. man. It's still great. Well, it's I mean, a pleasure just wow. to play, man. Yeah. And it's a pleasure to play with you, man. Yeah, you really you. sound thank awesome, you very much. man. It's a ball, man. Yeah. And, and thanks for coming here. It was like great. When the music wants to go through you, yeah, it takes you whatever. If you have da damages or yeah, the music you, still comes. You through have you. to. And and yeah. the thing is about music, it really is a healing kind of thing. Because when I'm playing, sometimes there's pain. But uh -huh. I don't feel it when I'm playing. And well, you get you get into the music, yeah. and it's just like something happens. And so well, it's really I would never give this up without a fight, you well, know. But I don't think anybody should give up without. Oh a fight. yeah. You oh, know yeah. I think the main thing Thank is to you. keep going, you know. Thank you very much. Because everybody's gonna come up against yeah. shit. You <laughs> either either you get depressed or you get or you get uh, a physical thing or you get whatever life brings you. And you have to, I think, keep going till you drop, <laughs> basically. Let's play yeah. some. Yeah, yeah, man. Let's go. <laughs> you know, let's play this blues. Yeah, let's play, play the blues.
thank you very much for coming. My wow. pleasure, man. I'm thank so, you. I'm so honored. And me too. Presence. Me too. Thank and, you very much. and now, after we finish, he's going to give me a guitar lesson. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How much do you charge? Oh, wow. <laughs> Peraí, peraí, calma, calma, não sai ainda não. Você gostou? Então é o seguinte, não esquece de se inscrever no canal, fazer um comentário, dar um like nesse vídeo. E se você gostou, mas gostou mesmo e curte mesmo esse Café Lá em Casa, passa lá no benfeitoria.com barra um café lá em casa e vem fazer esse café com a gente. Gente, eu estou aqui hoje com uma legenda da guitarra mundial, um cara que é um ídolo mesmo. Lenda. Legenda. 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 Uma lenda. Uma lenda. <risos> legenda não é não. A legend. <risos> I, I, you know, dude, I, I, I said, I'm here with a legend of the guitar, the, the world guitar. But in, in Portuguese, I, I translated legenda, <laughs> which means subtitles. <laughs> I mean, yeah, shit, good. I, I mean, mess up. I mess, I mess up English in Portuguese. <laughs> That's good. Wow. That's good. That's fine. I would say a Nikon.